Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, today we're going to, I'm going to finally show you the boy portrait that I did right over here, which um, is, I used a, a drawing that I did, and you'll see it in, as I start the painting, uh, as a reference from John Singer Sargent, one of his sketches that he used. I'm a, a real big advocate of John Singer Sargent, the, a bunch of portrait painters that are out there today that are just so good. Now, I don't consider myself a portrait painter. I mean, this is my seventh one that I've done. But I apply a lot of theory. I'm a left brain painter. I'm not a logical, I mean, I'm a very logical, analytical thinker. And um, I'm not a, a right brain creative person. So so some of you that are left brain like me, this I'm going to show you some ways and some mythology that we can work through to uh, paint some portraits. And we're just going to use good color theory, good form and shape, and um, brush calligraphy, which is going to be very important, okay? And we're going to have a lot of fun doing it. So I'm going to, with this particular technique, I work off of a sergeant a sketch, okay? And uh, it's one I found. And I wanted to do this because I wanted to see if I can apply my own colors, not just, you know, we've done a study when we did Jackie's, we did a study of sergeant and the painting of a child. And so this time I wanted to do one from his sketch, work from a sketch so I can work through those color tones and color mixes and stuff like that on my own to apply it to see if I can get the, the boy portrait this time from just a sketch with just working through flesh tones to get a better understanding of flesh tones, warms and cools and stuff. Okay, so I'm going to start out pretty, uh, pretty basic and basically this is the palette I'm just using on another painting right now, but... It's the same one that I use in the portraits, and I'll do some portrait mixes. Those of you that have studied the sergeant with me and painted Jackie and stuff, I use this uh, particular chart. These are some of the mixes and stuff that I've done on Jackie, and uh, you know we have those charts, so you can just go ahead and mix those colors, and then you have them started out. Uh, Otherwise, and, and then I'm going to apply a little different technique, though, than Sergeant. I'm going to start out with that Bister technique that I, sh I showed you before. We did it on Don, the Don Williams portrait, and I show you. And basically what I'm going to do to do that is I'm going to take burnt sienna and a little bit of pine green here. And this makes a dark, kind of what I call my sketching gray, okay? And that color is right about like that. Okay, it's a dark sketching gray, so this would be your dark values. And then you'll come over here and you'll lighten it up. And so, mid-tone values. And then I'll add water to this, to so I'll add water to, you know, thin it out to allow more uh, background to show through to make slightly lighter values of it. I will also increase the white sometimes. You'll see that. But this is the sketching gray in the first part of the... Uh, uh, video that you see me use. So it's bird sienna, a little bit of pine green, some white. You can warm it if you want. Uh, you know, some of you that have painted this a couple times with me may want to warm it with some yellow oxide. So, and which makes a beautiful color. Now the Bister painters themselves, they use just kind of a real uh, charcoal-y kind of gray, uh, I mean brown kind of color. But see, warming this up, this works really well, especially if you're going to do the light, light side struck of the flesh. It's a little bit warmer and not quite as gray as that is over there. You could cool it. You could add a little bit of the, you know, red violet. You can make variations of it. And this is the beautiful thing. And what I wanted to do, acrylic portraiture is just, a, I mean, we can use a lot of the same techniques as the oils, but see, we got one major thing, and that is that acrylics dry darker than oils. In other words, they're going to dry a little bit. Oils, you can put it on. When I was an oil painter for many years, you put the oil on the exact color and it's there. You put it on with acrylic, it always dries about one value darker. So you have to be able to work that. And in the first couple of portraits that I did, I kept finding myself getting darker and darker into some of the tones that I really wanted. So I wanted to do a real quick underpainting that helped me see the values of everything I was working on. And then when I put the acrylic on top, I put it on just a little lighter than what I see in that area to begin with. We'll get into that and I'll show you. But you can cool down. See, this will make a nice cool. So you can get some into a nice bister technique, which I'm going to show you right now, how I did it on the little boy, on the boy here. Um, <clears throat> and it will um, will show that, that particular step. Now, also, I just briefly mentioned about drawing on your video, drawing on your design and stuff. Those in the memberships and stuff, I show you a little bit more about drawing and stuff, how you do it. There are three methods you can use. On this one, I just sketched him on, but you could use that that uh, uh, plastic method that I showed you, or you can use the grid method also to get your main lines of your design on and the drawing lines on, and 
there's a thousand beautiful videos out here on YouTube from you know more professional portrait painters than me that can show you how to uh, you know sketch in divide it up into quadrants and get the proportions and stuff like that and we will go more into that as we get in right now with this painting I want to concentrate on tone quality calligraphy and you know, also get your get the lines on and then we'll concentrate on the actual flesh tones getting our eyes used to seeing some of these flesh tones and we'll have a bit of fun with it along the way and try this and this is my number seven I'm gonna keep going I'm gonna do a bunch more and I'll film it here for the channel so let's go over and, and uh, watch the bister part of the painting that I filmed then we'll come back and I'll talk to you about some of the flesh tones okay all right see you in a minute get going Okay, so I start out by basically sketching in the uh, main, what I call the landmark areas of the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and then I start using the broad part of my pencil, and this is a really strange pencil. This is my uh, co uh, contractor's pencil that I use when I do a lot of building, but I start to add shadows. I'm, what I'm doing is trying to find the light and dark, basically, of the painting, and so I'll sketch in uh, I'll sketch in the main landmarks and then start a little bit of shadow and what I'm trying to do with the goal of this is just find where some of the lights and darks are and get a feel for the painting that's all I'm trying to do is that initial feel of the painting so the next step after that is I start that bister technique. Now, the bister technique, like I showed you, is a mixture of what, it, well, this is a variation of the bister technique. It's a, mister, a mixture of the burnt sienna, pine green, and some white, which makes this kind of a grayish color here. And I'll be using the pine green and the burnt sienna during the painting. So you're basically starting a, a value painting. I'm using a, a very old number eight, or a number 10. A 10 would be even better, but I kind of chickened out and went to an 8 <laughs> here brush, flat brush, and I'm basically using the brush as a wash to put in some general uh, uh, shadows that you see down the right side of the face, and then I use the chisel with a little bit more color, a little darker, a little less water. All I'm using is painting water, a little less water, and come in and start doing a little more sketching and a little more shadows basically trying to find the shadows and again what I'm trying to do is to just get a feel for the painting using a single color and lots of water that's all I'm trying to do a, a simple feel for the painting so put on some gentle shadows and you can adjust the value with white but thin it out with some water if you got to put a just a little light a casting shadow like here in the transitional tones of the face where it's transitioning from the light side to the shadow side I thin out the colors with water maybe even lighten the value a touch with a, a touch more white and then just give the impression of the light side and the shadow side of the uh, of the boy that's all you want to do and you can come in and you, you can you know like put in the lips and you can put in the shadows on the nose and and some of the deeper shadow air slowly work through it trying to find some of these areas some of these areas of shadows but don't do anything that you cannot correct really easy this is a stage of the painting where you're trying to find your way that's all I'm trying to do is find my way uh, through the painting so now basically at this stage you see the light in the dark of the face a little darker on uh, the right side there and then we get these transitional values, mid-tone values up around six, seven, eights as, the, um, as it's coming across, especially that forehead. That forehead, I decided to really make the tones cross about that. And we'll talk about that when I get into the color here in just a little bit. But, uh, you know, then I, so I put in, so you can see those shadows, work the roundness of the north, the form, the roundness, the form, where do you see the shadows? And this was, I found this really great working from Sargent's uh, portraiture here, from his charcoal drawing to basically try to find some of these shapes and uh, find the light and dark values. The color will add and I'll, and I'll have to uh, 
do some creative thinking on that, but uh, that's what's going to make this whole portraiture so fun. So you start, I start out very light and then I slowly work it darker and darker. But just like a, a premier coup technique, like up along the hair, you see some very darks in there. I do like to go in and set a, a couple of strokes of real dark and then that sets my eye with how dark my shadows are going to be and then I come in and just start to work the values in between the lightest area which we see in the left side of his cheek and forehead especially up on his forehead that's where it's going to be the lightest and then where the shadows are and I really got his neck here probably a little bit too dark and so this is what I do I come back with some light color and I'll work it back in there. So you can make mistakes. That's what's what's so nice about this Bister technique is you can make some uh, mistakes with it. And so if it gets too, uh, you know, if it gets too dark or something like that, you got it too heavy, just add some white, lighten the value and go back and do some corrections. But it gives you a, a real good feeling, you know, on the painting here for shadows and lights. And you know, just use a, a soft scrubbing action and just like good form, like you're painting like a round shape of a, a round globe or an, or an apple or something like that. Look for the form shadows, look for the shadows and then where you're going to have your lights. And there you see like on the forehead, just coming back and lightening some of it because I, I started to get the forehead too dark. But then you'll start to see, okay, as I start to focus in like the sockets of the eyes and I find with the Bister technique, the sockets of the eyes, the eyes, and especially as you'll see me develop the bist, as I develop this sketch, I will work those sock, the eyes. The eyes are so very important because when you look at Sargent's drawing there, look over to Sargent's drawing. What jumps at you? Of course, the, the shadows on the head and stuff, but his eyes, especially those shadows underneath the upper eyelids. And so those are the areas that I'll, I will eventually want to focus in on. And, you know, if I can preserve those, if I can capture those, then I can capture some of the, I find I can capture some of the look of the boy here as I work through it. And I can make mistakes. Like you see here, even when I, I noticed, you know, uh, just a little while I, in working the nose here, I actually made the, the nose, I encroached into the eye socket just a little bit too much. There's no need, nose needs to be just a little bit more narrow, but that's okay. It's okay at this point, but notice how I start some of these shadows and you can start seeing the features and stuff come out of him. And I'll keep the shadows a little bit transparent. I'll keep the edges very soft so it's really easy for me to change later on in the painting. So continue the build. Now, as I work into the eye sockets, these are the, the most important part I, I feel of the painting is into those eyes and you can see I drop down and I use now this is a little a synthetic uh, filbert number four and I love to paint with this number four when I go in there and start add the details because I could use the chisel like I just did in making a line above the eye that real thin um, fold and above the eye and then I can use the flat to do any flat areas like you see me kind of indicating a little bit of the eyebrow and stuff there so and again I use a sketching technique I'm just sketching I'm just sketching with some medium value try to keep it up around a five or six bister color here thin it out with some water as you go into the highlight areas and just start some of those those sketching but make sure that you start to establish that shadow of the eye. It's going to go a lot darker even than what I have. Now you can come in and put in some of the pupil of the eyes, but again, keep them soft. Don't get them harsh. You know, I I had a tendency and I still do and and constantly fighting it of trying to to paint the the portrait too perfect in the beginning. You should and and uh, you know, I get wrapped up in it too, but you should try to keep it as suggestive as possible. And, you know, we'll work the details when we get in there. And so I, I sometimes like here, I'm jumping just a little bit further really than what I, I should. And I know, and hopefully with, you know, portrait number eight, I'll be able to, uh, you know, relax my lines a little bit more and do a little bit more, uh, uh, suggestive painting before I get to, uh, too detailed here. Like the lower lid that I put in there, see it's got, it's too much of a V shape there on the left side. And 
I can clearly see that now, but when you're working on it, you don't always see it. And so that's just me jumping ahead a little bit too fast. So we have to slow down. But again, you can see I come back in and darken the top part of the pupil, right where that shadow of the upper lid is gonna go down over the eye. And it again, it doesn't have to be perfect. My line for the eyelid is not perfect yet. Um, and you'll see I'm coming in to make it a little bit more. But I have found, you know, and again, this is only my seventh portrait that I've ever done. And I found that I, uh, uh, I, I have a tendency to uh, get too wrapped up in some of those little details. And so I, I have to really work on avoiding that, and, and, I'll, and I'll do that. But the, uh, the eyes here are really important. But I've also found the other thing that I've really found is that upper eyelid, the upper eyelid of that boy, and, and in all portraits, really sets the, helps set the expression of the face. And I found that in most portraits, when I feel that I'm fighting it a little bit, in most portraits I've painted seven, but in most portraits that I've done, in the portraits I have, when I start to fight it a little bit, the line of the mouth that I'm putting on now and the shadow, the upper, the shadow of the eye above the eyelid, how far you open up that eyelid, how much curvature is to that eyelid really sets the, the, the basically the expression of the, of the portrait that you have here. So, yeah. And so as I'm working these, you know, these details and stuff like that here, as I'm adding the shadows and stuff to the lips, I found later that I, okay, I got this a, a little bit too dark and they start to take away from the, basically the, the eyes that I wanted to put in. So here I have to come back and start to lighten them up and soften them out. When you look at the sketch on the left and you look at where I was going with this, I got so wrapped up into the structural details of the face that I, you know, I started to paint a little bit too dark and I had to come back and lighten some of it up. But the uh, you can see that the main parts, the what I call the landmarks of the face that we want to really preserve, is that uh, you know is the the uh, shadows and the basically the eyes, the eyes really get those eyes in there, and uh, and I'll add other things like into the ears and stuff, and it's just a suggestion just so I can see you know some of the other darks, but I don't I don't worry about them uh, you know too too much. But um, you can just start, and, and it's really nice, guys, with this uh, small uh, you know, number four. Few, uh, it, it's a synthetic, so it has a lot of spring to it. And with the acrylics, it just works fantastic. So and you can see me use it. My hand is way back on the brush, and I'm doing a sketching technique. And that just works so very well. But uh, at this point, I do feel the, the shadow under the lip is a little bit too dark. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not too displeased by the, the eyes and stuff, but that little mark underneath there is, is a little bit too much for me. And so, <laughs> you know, I, that's all I tend to see right now. And then I'll take a wider brush and I'll come back in and add some of the mid-tone shadows. These are shadows in and around your six and your value five. And just putting some of that in, you know, a little bit more. I really need that darker shadow because this just made him look like he had a huge head. And I need that darker shadow up into the front. But I was afraid of going too dark right now without having some of those eyes and stuff developed. So the, the thing is, there's going to be a, almost like what I call a push and pull of, of the of the portrait, what I find. And there, it can be very forgiving. And right now it is really forgiving for me making mistakes. And I made a little bit of a mistake there on the top of his head by getting that just a little bit too dark too soon, too heavy. And so it makes him kind of a top heavy, but I can adjust that. And, uh, you know, so here I am using that little number four again, I'll come back in, shadow or basically lighten up the lower part of the eyes, putting that the the shadow the expression that lid at back as a little bit more importance into the face that I see so you can go back you can go back and forth and painting this thing you don't need to have it perfect and I get wrapped up in some of that but you can see here I'm working on the upper lid of that eye looking for that roundness that roundness on the top of the eye is so very important that opens up the eye and that sets the expression of his face so I'll spend most of my time working on that, trying to find 
that type of expression. And it's going to be the calligraphy of your brush, the mark you're going to make, and most importantly, that value. And when we get into the color, it's going to be that value, that tone, that temperature and tone of it. But look for areas like the whites of the eye here, like where I'm working in right in now. See, that stroke right there is just a little bit too dark. But when I'm working in there right now, that that lower lid and that the white of the eye just kind of, you know, come in together. And so that's another thing that I found that I painted that right side there a little bit too dark, got it a little bit too dark. And I had to come back in and uh, lighten up the, uh, the whites of the eyes like I'm doing here on the left eye, which see by taking that pupil down, it's not round completely yet and that changes its expression. I'll fix that. But see how the pupil is not completely round compared to the other one here? I'm getting the value. So one of the things that I found with working with the portraits, as I correct the value, sometimes my, my shape of my drawing comes off and I'll go back and I'll have to correct that. It's a, a constant little push and pull here. And I'll end up drawing, draw, uh, dragging some of that shadow down onto that cheek to soft, soften the expressions of the eyes. But see, when I put that light in there, that changed the shape of his, uh, basically his pupil, I mean, the, of, of the eye itself, the iris of the eye and stuff. And, and uh, it's, it's really uh, kind of come off shape. So I'll have to go back in and, and correct that. But... You'll see me here working on some of that, and working on that line of that lid. That is what, to me, is where all of the, the action of this portrait is going to come in. So I'll have to come down. See, he looks very, very sad right now without having that roundness of his eye. He, he looks kind of sad. But now I know how to paint a sad, a sad little boy. But uh, I'll have to round that up here. I'll come back in to round some of that up a bit more, which changes. See how that totally changes his expression. But... The other thing that I know, and part of the reason why he gets a little sad right here, and I'm kind of seeing that, but I'm start focusing on that eye, is see the, the, the shadow line of the upper eyelid draws down too far on the lower left, on that lower left down there. Draws down too far. So now I come in, you see me, I've worked a little bit more shadow. I've worked some of the lights back up into it to soften some of the eyes. I'm not happy with the eyes yet at all, but I'm getting them a little bit closer. You can see I softened down that mark that was bothering me underneath the lip. And so it, it's a process here, This and it's kind of a fun process. And see, I love that little scrubbing technique of finding it. And you can take the bister part of this technique as far as you want you don't have to, to go as far as I am here. But I found myself just really enjoying the shaping that I can do, the working back and forth with light values, dark values. I found myself really, really enjoying coming in and working that. And I can, you know, come back in and soften some of those expressions up into the hair. You know, I, I got, it's like the strokes on his hair there on the left side. They're, they're a little heavy, but those can be taken out. They'll, they'll be taken out here you know, and um, it's, but it's that adjustment. And don't, you go through, at least I do, I go through parts where I really like it and then I don't. Now here I use those calipers I talked about before and I go back in and I check some of my proportions to make sure, okay, if something's bothering me in the area, like of course his hair here is bothering me. And I didn't know exactly what it was, but it was actually the, sh the strokes that I used in the calligraphy of his hair to build it. I found that later. But you can, uh, you know, use the calipers to push over there to the, the, the sergeant's drawing and then compare over to yours to start seeing where yours can be off quite a bit. And, you know, that, that left side of his face there is off just a bit. And I, I just found it some of it with the calipers and up along his hairline. So I'll correct some of it. Some of it I have to redo the hair to put new calligraphy in to correct it. But I got that a little low. I'll come back with some real light value nine uh, bister color and uh, which is that you know the gray I mean the green and the burnt sienna and white real light and put that into a forehead drag some of that down and uh, you know correct so you can see you can do a, a lot of corrections what you don't want to do and you have to be very careful of this is you want to work thin and it's better to put several layers of thin color than to work too heavy so 
work it several times. And you can see each little stroke, like I just made that stroke above the eye. I see where that, he's got kind of a, a round shape up above that eye that's right there, a rounding shape of his face. And I see it and I'm going to start building that. It's not perfect yet, but I'm going to start building that, which helps give him his expression on that side of the face. So I'll start, uh, I see it there and I'll start building it. And I, I don't worry about getting it absolutely perfect yet. You can see it's off a little bit, but I will slowly uh, start to refine it. So I found myself, as I'm going through the portrait, as I'm working through this technique, I start to see more important areas on the face, because this is your first time doing it. I start to see areas that are important. And like this area I'm working on right now, right above the eye, that is such an important area for that expression on his face. See, as I add that color and soften that out, it makes it kind of puffy above his eye right there and I see that that it, it's a little bit more of a, a, a gentle light plane over on the, the other side and that's just going to help his expression now when I first started out I didn't see all of that detail my eye wasn't looking for all that so as I build a little bit more and you can see I've pushed the shadow of his nose over thinning out his nose a bit and increasing that area of shadow in that socket as well. I corrected that at this point here. But you will see as you work through this technique, just take your time and enjoy it. The overall uh, bister part of this painting technique that I did here took me about an hour, but my first one that I did took me about three hours. So when I did the Jimmy Stewart uh, portrait that uh, I did in uh, one of my classes, um, that that one was the first time I, I really dived heavily into the bister technique, and uh, that one took me about three hours because I repainted his face several times. This one, uh, which is two portraits later, it, this one went a lot easier for me, and uh, I find that I'm going to, I think I'm going to get a little bit better and a better. And I will probably, in future lessons, short shorten up this part of the painting just a little bit because I'm starting to see the portraits a little bit better. But now you see, see I changed that hair. Now if you have to go back, go back. But see I changed that calligraphy part of the hair and that's totally changed his uh, his expression stuff. I still have to, if you look at it, look at it real close, I still don't have that little puffy part above the, you know, the face on the right side of his face there. I, uh, that eye, I don't have it light enough to really advance it as much as the sketch is. So I have to redo that. And the arch of his upper eyebrows are still a little bit too much. So I'll have to redo that and stuff. But I'll use that small brush combination, small brush, light brush, coming back in and start to refine it a little bit more. I really had a lot of fun with... Uh, with this part of the technique painting this because you could take a painting like this and and just leave the painting you know at, at this stage you know I would of course have to correct the lower part of his nose shadows on his nose and stuff like that but uh, see here now I see where that little light has to come on that area above that eye and it's a it's a real fine movement see I want to capture that rolling there so I'll, I'll push my brush at that at uh, those, that angle, that curvature there, trying to capture that bit above the eye. I got a little bit closer, and you know, what? You, with your next shadow, you can make a mistake, and then you have to come back and correct it, and that's just all part of it in finding it all here, you know. How dark are the shadows, how, you know, s the sketch and everything that you're gonna do, and, uh, you know, it, but it's it, it's very enjoyable, you know, add some of the smaller strokes to the shadows of his hair and stuff like that. Whatever it is, you, you know, you don't try, you don't need to be absolutely perfect before you go on because the color's going to change everything on him. And I found, and I found, you know, after the entire painting of the portrait here, which took a, a little bit over two hours, um, that I found that as I progressed through more and more and more through the portrait, I saw more and more and more. And I, there were some areas I just let go. Like the strokes there on his hair is not completely correct. Mine's rounding in, his kind of pull out. I see that, I'll correct that with, you know, I could, you could correct it now or you can come back and do it later. But uh, 
overall, it, it just helps you see light and shade where you're going to put those light planes, where you're going to put those shadow planes, and it gives you a good impression of the portrait before you start the colors. And you here, and I'm working here, this is just a part of the softening that I'm going through. So I'm taking some middle values, about a value seven or so, which is in that area, and a little bit wider brush. This is back to like a, a very old number 10. And I'm just softening some areas. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, later on, would I do that? I don't, I don't know, but I... See, what I'm doing here also is trying some calligraphy. See the, the straight strokes? Look at the angles that I'm using on my brush. So I'll pull down in some areas to, to lengthen the forehead, pull at an angle to, which helps turn his head, um, round up a bit on some of the cheeks. You'll see that. So I try some of those soft colors in the calligraphy. And so this is all part of it, figuring out a way of how to get some of those planes in. And at this point, I haven't worked too much on his nose, and I should add some of the shadows and stuff back in here. Let's go back to that smaller brush and add some of that shadow, the form shadow of the nose. So light is coming in, like I said, light's coming in from the left. And so the right side, our our view of him on the right side is going to be darker. As, and, you know, he, he has that, almost that really good, what they call Rembrandt lighting to him. Sergeant sketched him that way. But, um, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want to get the shadows and stuff too dark. You can see, so look at this and, and, you know, when you're looking at this video, look at where I am and look at the, and look to the thing. And where do you see some of the differences? Okay, so now the bister part of the painting is done. Let's talk about the flesh tones. So basically, you know, like I showed you here on, on this one here, you can mix up all of the colors here to do that. And then these are the extra colors that he would have out onto his palette. But what I, and basically what you have on your palette is flesh tones are really any red, yellow, white combination. And really yellow oxide and a touch of naphthol red light really make ni and nice flesh tones. So you really, red, yellow, white. So that's just a touch yellow. So you can add some red to it here. So that can make some beautiful reds here. So this this here, so if I was putting this in, this might be a nice forehead color or, you know, on the side of the face. If I'm going to the shadow side, I use a tiny bit of green here and that grays that up. And see, that starts into your shadows. Now you can also go back into your bister grays here and work those in to work some of these flesh tones in here. Maybe a touch more red or so into that. But these make nice grayed tones. Now, and I'll go even deeper, more burnt sienna and the greens and grays here as I go here. Now, so what I did is I made myself, and these are just all variations of, this is, you know, burnt sienna and green, a little bit of white, and then slowly, getting into the naphtha red light and, and yellows, working this way to work light colors, to work light values here. This is what I have here. And what I, what I really concentrated on was working those colors right across his forehead. That's where I started him first, was right there. I wanted to make that color run, and so all I gotta do now is with good calligraphy, transfer that in there. And then add some red, uh, add some red violets to cool it down and add some more pinky tones here with more naphtha red light to warm it up to make some of those different tones. And you'll see in the color part of it here, I will paint it, paint it, paint it, and sometimes paint it off structure, <laughs> you know, get, I'll basically make them, you know, make an error in my calligraphy while I'm concentrating on the tone, and then I'll go back and shape it all up to begin with. I found I wanted this exercise to be about color tones and working on all kinds of different color tones and that's what I concentrated on and so you'll see it here you'll see me paint an area paint an area go back paint an area again and that's because I'm working on little touches of tone to get that beautiful variation that a lot of uh, portrait painters go for now and um and Sargent would do it more with the calligraphy stroke, and I'm going to do it more with just a little bit more of a tone. But it's a lot of fun to try it, and it's really a lot of fun to try it when you don't have a color sample, and you've got to kind of generate it, you know, from 
other children's photos, other photos of uh, portraits and stuff like that. You have it. Now, you'll have mine that you can kind of work at. But try putting mine away. You know, watch a little bit of the video. Put mine away and start to develop it. And ask your eye to make these tones, to make all of those tones. And that's going to be a great way to do it, okay? Let's go add the colors now. So we, we start out by moving the colors, and I find the most important thing, like I showed you, is I'm going to match those colors, the flesh tone colors, across the forehead. So into the shadows on the right side, I added a little bit of that uh, pine green and a little bit of red violet to those colors to cool them down. Then I start by really expressing that light. You know, with acrylics, acrylics dry dark, so... You tint, what you have to do is actually paint a little bit lighter, especially in these flesh tones, a little bit lighter than what you think you're going to be, and then let it dry down into position. So I've come out first, and I just kind of gently put those colors across his forehead, and then I go back and work them again. And then the cheeks. And Sergeant always says, you know, into the cheeks, they're a little bit more ruddy, a little bit more red. So into the cheeks here, I added a little more naphthol red light, tiny bit of the uh, more burnt sienna and stuff, just to keep a nice gentle pink. I don't want it to get real pink, pink on it. On the, the other side, on the shadow side there, you see it's a little bit darker. You can have a tiny touch of the red violet in there to help cool it down. And especially as you build those shadows up the side. So now you see those shadows. And as I'm adding some darker shadows. Now you don't want those shadows to get too, too cold. So just little bits of that red violet. But here it's burnt sienna and green and just a touch of violet. Then I come back with some uh, lighter values there. As you get lighter, get into, you know, add a tiny bit more, um, you know, of the, basically that oranges and stuff. Like I told you, making the flesh tones, any red, yellow, white, orange kind of colors basically make those in there. And if you're painting a real interesting portrait, of course, you're going to vary those tones quite a bit more. We get more into that as we'll study more into, you know, other portraits. Right now, as you set these tones in, we're, my, my, what I'm concentrating on is gently setting the tones of the, fla of the face while still preserving the bister, the light, the dark, almost like a value painting of it. And then I'll come back and adjust the tones. So here I'm coming in with a smaller brush now, kind of finding the finding the tone that I want to put it like into the shadow of his eye. So his, his eye there has a little bit of a shadow of it. So I carry a little bit of pink into it, a little of that pinkish color into it. Not as much green as what I would use on the shadow side of the face. We put a, a gentle shadow in there. And this is, again, that number four synthetic filbert. Watch your calligraphy. And then you can come in and, you know, apply some light. And you can soften. If it still stays wet, you can soften into it, um, <clears throat> excuse me, with your brush, just lightening up your brush. Or take a little bit of a half tone. And then I'll build. You see here, so, uh, you know, I know that bottom part of that eye there, I want to get a little bit lighter, so I'll build it a little bit lighter. Build it where you see the light into that socket. And I my eye starts refining down and seeing a little bit more, a little bit more of the... Um, of the eye, the socket of the eye, and the shapes, and the tones. And what really makes a beautiful portrait, like look at the tone I just put in in the socket of the eye. See, there are two different tones. One slightly grayer as it gets up to the front part of the lid, then a little bit warmer as it's climbing out of that shadow. So you're adding a little more yellow, a little bit more of that naphthol red, making that warmer tone. And as you see that modeling of those tones in there, now that takes you a couple times, you see? And see, there's just a tiny little touch of another tone. And that's when I start to look for these little touches of tone and and... I can do some softening. I don't do really a lot of blending. What I do is make a slightly different tone, like here, just a little darker. See, as I come down that side of the eye, just a tiny bit darker than what the light strike area is on the upper lid, and then a tiny bit darker tone as I go down. And so I tone paint. I don't blend it in as much as I, I tone paint. So I keep refining it. Now, 
as you can see, I totally reworked that eye again. And this was a process for me, a learning process for me. But I'm building. The, the thing is, I'm going back and forth and building and, and pushing and pushing tones. So, you know, sometimes when you're painting like this and pushing those tones, you feel like you might go backwards just a bit. But you're not. What you're actually doing is adding so much more interest. Like, look up that whole right side of his face. Look at all of the tones and look at the, the slightly warmer tone that I'm putting in here right now. And it's playing right into that cooler tone that's right in there. And that's just giving the face just that extra little bit more. And that's what I find, you know, you have time. Now see, all of this, all of this took me about an hour to work into. But look at the little touches of these shadow tones. So I vary the shadow tones, a little more burnt sienna, a tiny bit of the red violet, a little bit of green. Sometimes I, I will use those sergeant palettes and English red oxide, which he used to use a Venetian red. That works really well in there. Um, and, you know, I, I don't add any blues. There's a lot of portraitures that say don't add the blue. Sergeant would sometimes add the blue, but I stayed away from adding the blues into this particular study. I've added it into other studies, the cerulean into the faces and stuff, but, and the ultramarine. But, you know, I, I stayed mostly to the warm and cools of basically the reds and yellow families in with this one and toning it with the green. Now look at all the tones that go in and around that eye. And see, I'll soften, I'll work down. Now, I worked, uh, when I'm painting this, I use the open medium. Those of you who've seen me do before, I use the open medium as I'm painting along here. So I use the open medium, and uh, I uh, that keeps the colors wet for a long time, for, for longer than uh, what I was doing in the painting. Now, as I come up here into the blue, I used an ultramarine blue, and some of my burnt sienna and a little bit of white to just lightly. You don't really want to have blue, blue eyes. I decided on blue eyes of this and for the little boy. Um, you can't really tell in a sketch what they'd be, but I thought little blue eyes. And then I make it slightly deeper in there for the pupil of the eye, um, building that in there. But I softened. Here's the important part, guys, when you're blues, that you're working with those blues, you don't want them too harsh. So it's really nice to soften the blues with the uh, flesh tone. And I'll put that in. Now here you see, I want to re I, I wanted to redo some of that hairline. I want to redo some of that nose and stuff. So you can see I totally painted back into the mouth, back into the nose. But even on his forehead there, I took it way higher, taking him out of position. I realize that that's going to happen. I know what his forehead should look like, but I wanted to see if I can, if I could overall with the hair, lighten the feeling of the hair. And to do that, I had to paint the flesh back up underneath it again and reset the hair. And I find for myself, and just like you see me doing florals and westerns and, and landscapes, I'll repaint an area several times. And as and each time my eye is refining the look of it, so I know where I want to go. And sometimes you just got to repaint those uh, those areas again. So here, as I'm working and working and working the nose, look at what's happening. I'm adding small little touches of other what I call related tones. So a tone that goes from a yellow orange into a little pink, into a little pink and green, a little bit of that pine green, graying it down as it's going to the shadow side, lightening it up with a little white and yellow on the warm side into the highlights that you're gonna put on, you know? But you look at that nose and look at how many tones are going across the nose. So, and you know, and I'll work the lights and I'll work the lights and then I'll work the lights again. And we still have to put the catch lights in and all that stuff, which really adds a lot. But see here, I'll work down that shadow side, putting in, it's called a, it's called a transitional half tone between the light and shadow. And, but it's a small working of the tone. See the little bits of the tone. Now here I come back with just a little more pink and yellow, slightly different tone. And look at the, look at the color progression that goes across that. It looks just like you're painting it into an oil, but we're using the acrylic. And because I concentrate on small tonal changes, just like what you're seeing in here, just little changes of the tone. I just change it slightly on my palette. You can see the big difference that it makes onto the face and adding into the lips and everything that I do here and resetting it. And now I'm starting to get a pretty good idea about what the 
what I want to do with the lips. I don't have them the way in which I actually want them. And notice that real dark shadow we had earlier. I still know it needs to go in there and stuff, but it's not in there right now. It's back. I'm back. I've worked it back out, softening back out, putting in other tones, and it will come back in. Just like this, it'll come back in. That shadow will come back in there. But now I start to look at the roundness, the fullness of the lips, and we have to get some more colors and stuff on there to, to build those a little bit more. Here's the catch lights. Using my, I use my bridge and my very small brush, and I'm just going to come in there and push that catch light in there onto the eyes. And to me, that's what really sets the magic of the eyes when you set that, that in there. And some things are off, like his eyelid on the right side's off. I see that that's, that's off and stuff, but I'll correct that. That's the beautiful, that's the nice thing is I will correct that and uh, it'll, you know, it'll all work out, but uh, I'll come back in and I'll even start to pick up other little catch lights. See, as I slowly lighten that catch light, that really puts in the, the you know, the, the spark to his face that he has there. But look, guys, look at his face. Look at all the tonal structure of his face. That's what I am really going for. And then before I to, to really start to judge any more of the face, I gotta get some more colors into the background. And what I decided was to really kind of put in this kind of cooler blue. This is the ultramarine lightened up with some flesh tone and uh, some white and which a flesh tone, of course, is basic uh, here is burnt sienna and stuff. But I have, uh, and I'll vary this with a, a touch of the, the uh, violets and stuff, but I wanted it, I wanted it cool, but not severely cool that he jumped forward. But look how that pushes that side of the face forward. So, but it actually pulls out his eyes. That's what I was looking for. I was trying to find a color that would kind of pull out his eyes without overpowering. So, you know, here your eye jumps from that color and into his face and into his eyes, which is really what I wanted it to do. So that's going to be kind of a, I decided that's going to be kind of an important color you know, within the composition. And since I didn't have, you know, a look of a color or a composition, not painting thing, we're creating it. That's one thing that I have found in my seven portraits that I take that eye color out some way and pull it out. And then to make those eyes even a little bit more, if you look here, I'm darkening this down and added that in there. I took some of that background color and I just put it in there and I put it into his eyes even more. And you can see that softness come in. I'm a, you know, I, I do this on a lot of my paintings, especially florals. I'll work into a background color and then I'll work it into here. I work it into my main object or here I work it into my center of interest. And I tell you that about all the florals and stuff I paint. So a lot of that uh, I look for, you know, in, what I do in a floral to what I do in this landscape and stuff. I mean, excuse me, into this portrait are pretty much the same. They're good artistic things that I do. Now, that color I just put on is what I consider a half tone. Softening it out, softening out the background there with a half tone. I, there's areas that I still have to correct and stuff, but the background here is really helping me see his face a little bit more. And I have some, some, you know, edge, some ideas off a bit, and that's okay. But overall, I'm liking the tone and stuff here on his face. And so I decided to really see if I can jump this out with a little bit more of a blue, a darker blue, burnt sienna and blue, ultramarine blue, a little bit of violet in it, darker yet, and uh, see if I can really get a contrast here without taking away from his face too much. So I'll put that, I really want the viewer's eye to come in here really, even though it's the, the lights, I really kind of come in on that um, you know, on this left side here of his face where the light is. And so the edges get a little cleaner. I'm looking at my calligraphy here, kind of figuring it out where I can keep that clearer shadow and still do this a la prima stroke look to it without overpainting it too much. And that's that's really kind of hard. That's going to come with, with, uh, with practice. And on my seventh portrait here, I'm getting a little bit better on it. I'm not where I want to be yet with it, not like I am with a floral. A floral, you've seen me many times. I can just whip this in and do this without a problem. But with that face, you know, and with the structure, I'm still trying to find how I want to emulate. I just want to suggest the structure. Now you see on Sergeant, he has that real 
the shadow from the arm that comes down there. But I'm thinking I need to lighten a little bit of the front of him here on that light side before I put that shadow in. I started that shadow with the bister, but I'll change it a little bit. I decided I needed to change that just a little bit uh, here and and change my tone. See, uh, you know, a little bit more ultramarine blue, a little more pure ultramarine blue. And see, each time that I paint that, you see, I'm... I my thought here is sketching. I'm sketching. See how I use the chisel, the brush, and I sketch. I'm kind of sketching, kind of finding, kind of changing the tones a little bit, kind of suggesting. That's what you want to do. I found this. This is an amazing part of the painting, but one of the hardest parts of the painting is to be suggestive like that, and. Uh, to let it go and not try to paint perfectly. And that's what I did for so many years was I tried to paint absolutely perfect. And now it's try to be suggestive, try to be suggestive in everything that you do. And uh, yeah, so here I'll come in with that. You know, he has, you look at the shadow on that side over there. And so I know I've got to get some of that shadow in there. I don't want it to be exactly the same as the light that's coming in on the other side there. Uh, you know on to the left side so I changed the tone a little bit and when you head to that shadow you have a couple of choices as an artist you gray it and in here you can gray that ultramarine really nice with some of that flesh tone or some burnt sienna or you cool it and here we cooled off to this palette with that red violet in there so as you're putting in those tones just run some differences between graying it or cooling it and darkening and cooling it and that's what I found myself doing most of the time and again getting that suggestive brush marks that suggestive brush stuff that goes in there and here so here I found this fantastic it's just coming in with the dark and then the light taking some of it in and out working that edge in and out and that made a more suggestive collar for him and a little different than what the drawing what Sargent was doing and that's okay but you know right now you're to the point in your painting where you're just going to try to paint a nice portrait you know there's some areas that I have off that I know I have off um, you know in this part of the painting uh, but I can correct those and I love that paper towel I just love using that paper towel to go in and do it now you see I put the rest of the background in here now I'm going to go back and and correct some of that hairline that I, I originally made a mistake on it but overall look at the the lighter gray that I put up there in the top and then over on to the right side do you see the flesh tone that I took right out into the background there that took a little bit of um, that took a little bit of courage but it really uh, to me it really added to it and I actually if you look into a shirt I, I put a couple of strokes of flesh tone down into a shirt and it kind of ties your painting together now here's an important part that I found so I'm going to restate some of his hair and work his hair and I found that I really as you get to that back edge of that hair that's where you really want to get all the primer you really want that back edge of that hair to disappear so uh, you really got to work that edge. So see, I'll, I'll come in with the hair and then I'll come in with the, my background color here. And I want that. And see, this is what's really going to help shape his his head is you're going to want to work those edges back and forth. So I grab two brushes and I work the hair and I work the edge. And see, it makes a soft edge. And by keeping those edges so soft, guys, and then his eyes so powerful, those 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 uh, shadows, uh, the, the shadow from the upper lid, so powerful, that's what really gives the expression to his face. And so I'll find just a little bit more of those shadows, some of the calligraphy. My calligraphy on his hair, I could have done a little better with it, but I, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, but I found myself trying, sometimes getting into a copy mode, trying to, to capture it, you know, and so... But here, finally, I take some light color with that smaller brush and just come in and do some sketching marks of it. See, I try to find the direction that I want to use my mark to give the suggestion of the hair. And it's like, you know, if you've never done this kind of stuff too, I really suggest you work on a couple of the dog portraits that we've done, a couple of the animal portraits that we've done. Those help so much. Go over and, and paint uh, um, 
you know, Watson and stuff, the, the animal portraits, because that helps so much in understanding what little movements make into those, you know, into the hair and everything. But it's a process of working it back and forth and trying to leave some of the calligraphy, changing the brush from a big one to a medium size. So here I'm coming in from that small brush to a more medium sized brush and putting in some just gentle directional movement of the hair without being too specific. If you go in there with that small brush too much, it'll look too stiff, too built up. So the big brush helps and see big textured brush and get that textured light in there really kind of sets that direction. And that's what I was trying to do there is capture a little bit of that light, build up some of that texture and they're capturing the, you know, some of that light and see, whoops, a little bit too light. And, you know, there you go. Find the value. Find the value where he is there. and Just kind of be suggestive. Just like what we painted on his shirt and stuff. Try to find the suggestions of it and try not to overwork it. That's a hard thing to do. And I, you know, I'm one to talk. I overworked this several times. Got into it and overworked it several times. But try, try to put it on and get out. But you can always do this, like I'm doing with the medium value there. Come back and reset something. And if it doesn't work, just take some of your dark. Go back and reset that. But one of the things I really want to point out is look at the top of his head. See, earlier on, remember earlier on in the video, I showed you where I got that head too round, too big up there. And by carrying that background over his hair, softened the receding edge of the top of his head. So even as you're building some of these shadows, be careful not to make a perfect line back there. Let it be fractured, let it be broken. Let some of those lines be broken. As you're trying, you know, don't get wrapped up in the movement of the hair so much that you make that top of his head so perfect and you lose some of that uh, background color and stuff coming in. If you do, which I did a couple times, you just come back and paint it back and forth. Paint the dark, paint the middle tones, paint the light tones, trying to find some of that that nice, you know, casual movement that we want. And and look at the other side on the shadow side over there. I'll pick some of that up and see him real light. See how far back my hand is on the brush? It keeps a real soft tip and work real light, real gentle with those with those colors over there. You can get a little more expressive as you get up there around this, you know, into his, his face there a bit, but, you know, blur some of those edges out and, uh, you know, try to be as simplistic as possible. And that's what I was trying to work on in this. And I, I tend to overwork it and I'll admit it, but I'm trying to get more simplistic. A floral that I've painted thousand of, you watch me go in there and power through and, um, you know, I can be really suggestive really easy. But with like the boy here and stuff, I get wrapped up with expression and forms and all that kind of stuff. And it's an understanding process. And that's what I'm trying to do is understand the process. And so it uh, is something that I have to work on back and forth. But you can see you can work on that. You can, with the Ala Prima technique that I'm doing here, you can add any tone at any time. And so you can come back with a medium tone. A medium tone in Ala Prima can sit on top of a light tone, and a shadow can sit on top of that tone as well. And, uh, you know, blur out some of your edges, do some things, change your brush, especially painting the hair. Change the brushes, change the size of the brushes, change your strokes, change your direction. Just try to simplistically capture it. And I overworked it a bit, but in the end, when I finally got done with it, I was I was pretty pleased, you know, with the uh, with the way in which I worked out the hair. I'll I'll do better next time, <laughs> you know. And that's what I'll do is I'll I'll work it again. I'll do better next time, and um, you know, as I as I work towards, I know what I need to do. I need to work towards working some of this hair and stuff like this a little more suggestive, a little quicker. Now, this is another color. I decided to add this in trying to capture a little bit more. But what I did was I took his hair color, which was mostly, uh, his hair color is mostly yellow, burnt siennas and greens, making different values like that. And then I added a little bit of blue into the shadow side over here, burnt sienna and that blue, leaving it a little bit more to the mind. But that tiny bit of that blue gray pulls the shirt color back up into his hair. And, you know, and, and looking at it afterwards, man, I, I you know, I would, do a little bit more like uh, 
John Howard Sandham, who I really like, he puts he would put blue right up into that hair, and I really like his stuff. But see here, I'm just going back and softening some of those edges and pulling some of that in. That's back edges, guys, to make the portrait look really soft. This is, the, you know, if you learn nothing else from this video, watch those back edges that I'm doing right now. This is what truly makes the portrait soft and brings the viewer into his eyes. So when you look at the sketch over there, see how soft his back edges is. Even though he has a lot of light dark on that left side, you know, th those edges are pretty soft. And so we want to be able to come in there and add some of that and preserve some of that and grab that light and stuff like that. But those back edges have to be really, really soft. That's what we got to concentrate on. And so what I'm using now is my favorite brush. This is one, you see me use it in the landscapes. I'm going to add a little blue in here. But you see me do it in the landscapes. That's my bristle that I brush that I made that I really, really like. I took a round brush, hammered it out flat, cut out some things. It makes a real soft uh, bristle that gives you this, this edge. And I love it. And here I'm using it just with some color to add a little bit more light and dark movement. This is... Some of your light colors, some of my light gray, but warmed. Look at it. It's warmed with just a tiny bit of flesh tone. And that's what kind of, you know, ties your whole painting together. That's what I love. Tie it together. So we got the colors on. We got it. Then I dropped it into a frame. This is a frame. We make our own frames here at the studio, at the gallery. And I added that. And I added a little bit of the, just took a uh, very small filbert and just added a little bit. But you can, you know, one of the things, like I just said, was, the, you know, those flesh tones. See the flesh tones back in here? And I added little touches of the flesh tones back down in through here. And, you know, some of the grayish tones that pull down into his hair, a little bit of the flesh tone back through there. It's that unifying, it's that unifying of the subject. And so... You know, you see me do this in florals. You see me do this in, in landscapes where I'll pull that color through. You know, one of the great landscape painters said you should always carry a common color through all your planes, or your linear perspective planes that you have, or atmospheric perspective planes that you have in the landscape. I do it on florals all the time. You see me go back and forth. The last rose that I just put up on the channel here a day before yesterday, that white rose at the end of the painting, I, I mentioned going in there with the green into the leaves and taking that green right into the rose to create a harmony between the leaves and the roses. So sometimes, and I just want to say this to all you, and, and I thank you for making it this far through the video. They're big videos to do. It. Most people, 90% of everyone that watches the videos and stuff, doesn't watch it all the way through. And they lose so much of the techniques and little bits of knowledge that come to you, you know, here, you know, by watching the video all the way through. When I paint the roses, so if someone says, okay, how can you paint, you're on your seventh portrait, and you painted a pretty good portrait in seven portraits, with some mistakes, but <laughs> you painted a pretty good portrait, how can you do that after only seven? It's because a portrait, don't be afraid of a portrait. A portrait can teach you a lot of things. Yes, you will make, and I made mistakes on him, I made errors and shapes and some of the structures. What I was concentrating on more than anything else is the color, and they can teach you a color color progressions and harmonies and total control of your palette that not, that you won't get from painting flowers or painting oceans or something like that. But art is art, and each genre of art is going to ask some different things out of your brain to capture that image. And so if you can, I know, you know, it's like the Westerns, like I tell a lot of you about the Westerns. You know, the Westerns, I, when I added the Western genre to things that I paint, my whole art changed because westerns are painted different than a lot of other things. And then it gave me other ideas and different brush calligraphy and stuff that I apply to different things. So I know I like to talk a lot. I know I love to teach you guys. I know what frustration is like. I know what is learning. I know what it is to study and learn. I've been doing it for 40 years of painting. The, but the thing is, painting the different genres... Don't, don't shorten yourself by saying, hey, I, I don't want to paint a Western. Well, then you're cutting off an area of creativity that you're going to apply to other things. And in that last part of that video where I'm talking about
putting color on and working it through his shirt and how to do all that kind of stuff. That particular brush calligraphy came from a Western. And if you go back and some of you and watch the Bronco Rider and watch how I do some of the end of that Bronco Rider, especially into the into the dust and how that dirt and stuff all moves up and everything. It's the same calligraphy there that I just used on his shirt. The same brush movements, brush habits, and that same little bristle filbert, that, or that bristle brush that I took and made, same brush. So paint the different genres. You wanna be a beautiful rose painter? Paint a portrait, paint an ocean, paint a western. And they'll give you the ideas the looks, the plane, the color tone, the, train your eye to see some of those other things, okay? And make sure you don't forget about any of them by making sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you click the little bell. When you click the little bell, that this YouTube will notice, notice you when you have another video come in, and we have another one coming in two days. So make sure you click that bell. Thank you for sticking all the way around with it. I'm going to be doing a lot more portraits, a lot more portrait studies. Some of them I'll do in my online classes. Some of them we'll do here with you. And if you want to see some more, leave me a comment. Tell me you want to see some more. I'll show you some of that stuff. And paint all the genres, guys. Paint them all. Watch them all. Paint them all. That's how you're going to grow. That's how you're going to grow the fastest. Okay. This is my seventh one in two years. I've taken them over two years. I'm going to do some more. And each one that I'm doing, I'm feeling that growth, that understanding, and it's like, okay, now what to try? And they're a lot, they can be a lot of fun, okay? Already, you know, give that a try. Leave me a comment, and I'll see you guys in just a couple days. We've got a, we got a landscape to do. I've got a, um, I have to do a commission painting, which I think I'm gonna take you guys along, which is a mule, a mule deer portrait. So we'll go move from a little boy portrait to a mule deer. And we have a lot of mule deer out here. And uh, so I'm going to be doing one of those. So a lot of, lot of fun stuff coming. Okay? All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you in the next one.